So I may be a little bit behind on this one, but have you guys seen the real life GTA guy? Floyd Joker, man, you might have seen that character on GTA 6, GTA. We gotta talk. With any modicum of success come the leeches. Like, that's my man on TV. How did this happen? And we're building the biggest case on you. In December of last year, Rockstar Games finally, and I mean finally, unveiled the trailer for their new game, Grand Theft Auto 6. And of course, this is a game that has long been anticipated, pretty much since its predecessor, GTA 5, came out when I was just a freshman in high school. Now, here I am, a grown man with a marriage and bills, and GTA 6 is finally getting a trailer. What? year is it? But even with the frustrating news that Grand Theft Auto 6 would not be coming out until 2025, two calendar years after the trailer came out, the teaser that delivered this information was met with insane hype. The teaser itself got over 93 million views in the first 24 hours, with fans posting reaction videos where they were absolutely freaking out. Other fans taking the trailer and slowing it down frame by frame to analyze for Easter eggs and little secrets. So suffice it to say that provided this game is finished when it actually comes out, I think Rockstar is going to have a major hit on their hands. But of course, with any modicum of success come the leeches. The people who want become part of that success. But instead of doing something constructive to add on to the value of what's already there, or taking notes on what the successful person has done right so that then they too can duplicate it, they want to drag down the big successful thing that inspired them in the first place. If you don't contact me within the next 48 hours, we're taking legal actions. Imagine my surprise when I turn on the new season of Love is Blind this morning and see my boyfriend. Rath definitely just stole my move. And with that, meet the Miami Joker, aka Lawrence Sullivan. Lawrence was arrested in Florida in 2017 for taking his gun and showing it to the cars passing him by on the street. And it's interesting because pretty much everything that I read about the crime suggests that he wasn't pointing the gun to shoot or to threaten to shoot. It kind of sounds like he just wanted to show them that he owned a gun. And who knows why, you know, typical Florida man stuff. Feed the alligator, pick up the gator and use it to rob the 7-Eleven. As you're walking out, go passersby your gun so that they know that armed gator robbery was a choice and not a necessity. And now I don't know if you've noticed, but Lawrence has a couple of recognizable features. Just a few things that set him apart from the average Florida resident, wouldn't you say? Namely, look at his face. He looks like a tattoo artist sleep paralysis demon. And that's just when he's home hanging out. Now imagine this guy running up after your car on the street going, look at my gun. Also, I might add, I understand he goes by Florida Joker, you know, because of all this, but the Joker doesn't have tattoos. I'm sorry, you don't look like the Joker. And yes, I'm aware that Jared Leto's forehead said damaged, but did you really want to model your entire personality after that Joker? Really? Really bad. No way any Joker has a tattoo of the bat symbol on their forehead. That's like the opposite of their thing. Seriously, I don't get it. Why does every incel who ever alters their appearance suddenly decide that they are the Joker? Is it like the meninist memes with Heath Ledger that go around? But of course, if you've seen the GTA 6 trailer, you are probably thinking to yourself, wow, he looks so familiar, but how could that be? He looks like no one I've ever seen before and nobody I will ever see again. How could I recognize him? Well, you might recognize him from this part of the GTA 6 trailer. There he is. There he is right there. Next to me on the left, I have a single frame that shows in the GTA 6 trailer. And then to the right of that, is Lawrence's mugshot. Now Lawrence is saying that this frame in the GTA 6 trailer is copying his mugshot. This your boy Joker Gang 305, Raw Sequel Live, Floyd the Joker, Mammy Joker. You might have seen that character on GTA 6. You know they got that character with the face tattoos. You know who they got that expired by? By me. Just look me up. Floyd the Joker, Mammy Joker. You know what I'm talking about.
I don't think they look very similar. I think it just looks like a guy with tattoos on his face. If anything, the one on the left looks more like the Joker. And the one on the right looks like a guy who thinks he is the Joker. But if you really did believe that that was you, with a really strong, prominent image of yourself in the GTA 6 trailer, and the trailer is about the part of the country that you live in, I'm almost not surprised by what Lawrence did next. GTA, we gotta talk. And so this started as just a basic call out post. Hey, I saw the trailer. I believe I'm in the trailer. You should probably hit me up and at least acknowledge that. And in my opinion, if you really believe that it's you in the trailer, this is reasonable. Right now, I'm not trying to take sides and I'm also not trying to weigh in on if this is actually him. But I am trying to say, I don't think it's that crazy to say, hey, my mugshot is pretty similar to the mugshot you guys showed in your teaser and just seeing where that takes you. But I also believe your expectations should be very limited. But of course, like the Joker himself and all great supervillains, Lawrence doesn't know when to stop. It's not enough to point it out. We need a threat, a deadline. GTA, I'm giving you the biggest free marketing you got in entire history of running this GTA game. I want an extra million dollars. Y'all taking forever to respond back to me. You see that? Find the other character. Find the other person in Florida they betrayed that character from. I'll wait, I will wait. You got three days, three days before my lawyers go crazy on this case. I got hard evidence, hard evidence. You got three days. And by the way, I actually believe the third day was his birthday, if I, if I read that correctly. Before I sue you, three days before I blow Gotham City to smithereens. Imagine you're watching the news or like Jimmy Kimmel or something, and all of a sudden it cuts to static and then this guy is on full screen issuing an ultimatum to a big company. And it's even kind of shot like a hostage video, like down to the wardrobe. It is not that far off. He feels like a comic book villain. And quite honestly, I love the idea of this guy bringing in his lawyers. Uh, would those be the same lawyers that got you sentenced in the first place? Where's the stuffy lawyer sitting in his office saying, hmm, yes, Mr. Sullivan, I believe you have a case. Like in all seriousness, I can't imagine this guy being allowed to walk into an office of any kind, let alone a copyright lawyer outfitted to take on a mega company like Rockstar. Showed him this. That's Lizzie Lohan in the digital camera with a bottle on her hand, sunglasses. In that character, she has a cell phone during the peace sign. That's not her. She had no case. I got a case. They took my likeness. They took my life. They took my story and made it to a video game. So GTA, them three days are up. Them three days are up. I already talked to my Jewish lawyer. He's coming to my house as we speak and we're building the biggest case on you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Miami Joker. I didn't know it was a Jewish lawyer. It was a Jewish doctor. And, and I love that he breaks down the problem with his own case. This happened before with <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. That's not her. There are subtle differences. Bro, that's not you. <laughs> And like, how do you know they took your story? You haven't played the game yet. Notice how quickly this is over. And it doesn't look like him. There's no way this is more than just like a flash on a television screen. This is going to be a character like watching the news and they pop this up, especially because this whole trailer is like TikToks and things going on in game. It actually has a little news logo in the corner. This is, this is some nonsense. Frankly, the only leg that I see, and I'm not a lawyer, I have no legal expertise, that this person could stand on is if this character is for some reason in more of the game than we think and actually lives out his life story, is arrested for the same reason, goes around showing passing cars his gun. But as it stands right now, we don't actually know that that character is in any more of the game than what we've already seen. He may not actually have lines. I gave you 
So much publicity. Millions and millions of people are seeing you. I'm getting harassed. You're the GTA 6 Joker. I'm not getting paid for this. I want my pain and suffering money now. Now, GTA. Oh, right. You're the reason that arguably the most anticipated video game of the modern era got as much publicity as it did when they dropped their trailer. I see that now. So if you don't contact me within the next 48 hours, we're taking legal actions. We're not playing with you. And there it is. There's that ultimatum again. You didn't meet the deadline the first time, so don't worry. I'm going to extend it out another 48 hours, but I'm really serious about it now. And the thing is, even if you could prove that it was you that this character was based off of, and that's a big stretch because no matter what, you did not see it go down. Parody law and free use are very flexible, especially when it comes to situations like this. And once again, let me say it one more time, I'm not a lawyer, so take everything I say with a huge grain of salt. Rockstar is in the clear for the same reason that Larry David can duplicate the Donald Trump mugshot on this season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Your mugshot and all of your arrest information, whether you are found guilty or not, once you've been arrested, are a matter of public record. Your mugshot is not your intellectual property. But even if that wasn't the case, you can still parody major parts of the pop culture zeitgeist without legal repercussions as long as your parody is legally distinct. How do you think things like the boys work? And one more time, and I cannot stress this enough, I am not a lawyer. And I love when he says rock star, you're taking forever to respond. I guarantee you they've seen this. I promise you that. And I also promise they're laughing at this. Like, why would you justify this with a response if you're a serious company? Fortunately, it seems like our Miami Joker is aware of this. We got to talk. I'm not suing y'all no more. It's been two whole months. Y'all still haven't reached out to me. Show me like 50,000, 100,000. Let me voice the character. Let me go to the meet and greets. Let me go when the game's released, sign, take pictures with fans. We make worldwide news, every blog, every news outlet. God, and you know someone at Rockstar just wiped the sweat right off of their brow. I mean, wow. Thank God the famous mugshot face guy isn't suing us, major video game company Rockstar, anymore. Yeah, I mean, we really have the worst lawyers. I don't know that they're up to the task of taking on the Florida Joker. And like, I love it because as you watch this series of videos, you can see in real time what it's like to be ignored. Like we've gone down from a million dollars in residuals, plus let me be in the game, to I'm suing you for everything you have have all the way back down to I'm not suing you anymore please just let me voice the character and maybe I can go to comic-con too and meet some of the fans which also like let you meet the fans I mean it actually really goes to show what a powerful tool silence is in a negotiation second only to actually knowing that you're negotiating with someone and you know what if they ignore him for just a little bit longer we might actually just get down to okay give me a free copy of the game and like a sticker and that brings me to the trend that I actually want to discuss here in this video we talked earlier about leeches people who want to get famous and notable by attacking things that are famous and notable and in doing so they insert themselves in the famous and notable thing whether it be true or not and let me tell you the florida joker is not the only person in the landscape doing this right now hey! have you guys heard of love is blind imagine my surprise when i turn on the new season of love is blind this morning and see my Boyfriend. But folks, before we get into that, I did want to take a second to thank our sponsor for today, myself. That's right, I'm grabbing the sponsorship message today to tell you about a really exciting project that I'm doing with a channel called Designing Hollywood. Listen, if you've been enjoying this video and you want to hear me talk about more stuff, not only is there a tremendous back catalog on this channel right here, now you can also head over to the Designing Hollywood YouTube channel, where I'll be bringing you new and different content all about movies. Check out this teaser. 
Hi everybody, my name is Oliver Ricketts and you might know me from my documentary series American Genius or the 15 years of content that I've created on YouTube. But more important than all of that, I am a film lover and a movie enthusiast. Which is why I'm so excited to tell you that I'll be teaming up with Designing Hollywood and bringing you fresh content on the year's newest movies, as well as retro deep dives into some older movies just to tell you how much we love them and why. Designing Hollywood is about all things movies and this will be about celebrating all things movies. I can't wait to get started, so let me give you a hint as to what our first video will be. So make sure to like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss it when we dive into your favorite movie. Folks, I'm very excited about this because it's going to allow me to talk about movies with a crew of really dedicated professionals who I love and respect. And at the same time, this channel can be relegated to my experiments, my curiosities, my documentaries, and my film endeavors. Thank you so much for listening. Back to the video. Have you guys heard of Love is Blind? Of course you have. If you have a girlfriend or a wife, she's always asking you to watch this show. And if you are a girlfriend or a wife, you're probably always asking your significant other to watch this show. And if you fit into neither of those camps, you're probably on this show. But if somehow you are not familiar with Netflix's Love is Blind, here's an elevator pitch for the show. See, it's this reality show where you've got a bunch of singles, and they talk to each other through the wall, but totally blind, okay? And they're trying to find love, but without seeing each other because they have to make sure that it's true love and it's not shallow. Hence why they can't see each other. They're just going off the vibe of their conversation. And I believe usually the contestants to start are shallow. And then the rules are that the people who started shallow at the beginning, after talking to each other through the wall, they have to decide if they're going to get engaged. And if they decide yes, only then are they allowed to meet each other face to face. Then they go on their honeymoon and they live with each other for a little bit. Will they decide if they're actually going to get married? And that's Love is Blind. This show is a phenomenon. People love it. It drops on Netflix, but it doesn't drop all at once. It drops weekly. So when it's coming out, people talk about this show for weeks on end. And one of the things people really like about this show is the amount of drama that comes out of it. You can call your friends up and say, I can't believe what this person did. It's gossip without having to gossip about anybody that you actually know. Which is why I have to admit what this girl Ryan Stringfellow did is really smart. Imagine my surprise when I turn on the new season of Love is Blind this morning and see my boyfriend. Yeah is my man on TV. Obviously, I'm not gonna tell you who it is. I still think he's the love of my life and we can work past this. So like, I'm not gonna say his name, but holy <laughs> This is just how I'm feeling right now. I literally watched the first episode, I had to turn it off because I was literally just staring at the screen like, hello? And of course, the first thing that I'm thinking when I see a video like this is, oh my God, any producer worth their job should be trying everything to get her on this show. Because this show is about gossip and gossiping about what the people on it are going through. And here comes an outsider who's not even on the show with the biggest gossip curveball the show has ever seen. And of course, if this actually happened to her, I feel awful for her. This is the kind of thing that cheating men do all the time. It's that hubris of thinking you're never going to get caught, probably because you don't respect the person that you're cheating on. Even if you are on the show that every woman in America is watching. And this is season six, so if your girlfriend is watching it, you probably already know that she watches the show. Like imagine turning on the dating game or like The Bachelor and it's your husband sitting Sitting there going, yeah, I think it's cool to have two girlfriends at the same time. That's my story, I'm looking for love. But of course, the validity to the video itself has now been called into question. Because even though she didn't name who the boyfriend is, also smart for what she's trying to achieve here, Love is Blind fans do not play around. They went ahead and within like 24 hours, narrowed it down to one contestant, Jimmy. Look at him, he's so smug. And of course, leave it to Jimmy. He wasn't going to take this all lying down. He hopped right on TikTok himself and made this response. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know this woman. I've never met this woman, it's not true. I gotta give it to her. It's an incredible marketing ploy. She is getting so many clicks and she's making so much money off my name. It is 
insane. She doesn't say it's me, but she's definitely insinuating it's your boy. Also, I love that he named the video Ryan Stringfellow was never my Megan Fox. What a bro -y guy thing to write. And guess what? The original video might be fake. The response might be fake. I don't care. I still think you should get Ryan Stringfellow on this show. And even Jimmy agrees, it's genius. I gotta give it to her. It's an incredible marketing ploy. But none of that changes, whether it's real or not, that Ryan Stringfellow turned on the first episode of Love is Blind, and instead of reacting to it in a way that most people would have, her idea was to jump on TikTok and make a video about it, tagging them, and to leverage that for clout. Because if it really is her boyfriend cheating on her, I think the next step would be to call your boyfriend. This is just how I'm feeling right now. I literally watched the first episode, I had to turn it off because I was literally just staring at the screen like, Hello? And if it's not, obviously we're leveraging this for clout. And the thing is, it definitely worked. She's making so much money off my name. It is insane. Get her on it. And if it's true, great. Let's hear all the drama. But if it's not true, that's even better. What made you do this? Why did you pick Jimmy? Do you feel good about this? And I hope she'd answer yes, because I feel good about this. And I know I called these people leeches at the beginning of the video, but what they really are is smart. Kind of. Because what they wanted was attention. And I would not be talking about them if their videos did not actually grab my attention. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Which means that the videos work. And this is how fame has worked since its inception. It's actually this concept called passive collabing. If Mr. Beast makes a video, he's working on his own. But then a million YouTube algorithm gurus decide to make a video about whatever Mr. Beast said in the video, you're not watching it for the guru to give you advice. You're watching it because they're leveraging advice given to them by Mr. Beast. So in a way, they are actually collabing with Mr. Beast. He's just not aware of it. And that's kind of what this is. And celebrity in general is all about associations. Name association, brand association. Who are your friends? Who do you beef with? In the world of celebrity, this almost always overshadows what you've done to become famous in the first place. When I was growing up, there was a big joke about why Paris Hilton was famous. She was famous for being famous. Essentially, she was a celebrity for doing nothing. And at that time, that was kind of unusual. But with the advent of social media, that phenomenon of being famous for nothing is becoming more and more common because more people have a platform than ever before. We now have the concept of a micro celebrity, the mini influencer, the person who is halfway famous. And this can be literally anyone. It can be the guy with 100,000 people watching his live stream or the person with 200 likes on their Instagram posts. As long as you have somebody following your story in some capacity, I would view you as an internet micro celebrity. But of course, this also means it's harder than ever to cut through the crowd. And when everyone's super, <laughs> No one will be. You need coattails to get to the top. And so I would just encourage these people, if they're going to use drama to get where they want to go, make sure they have a talent or skill that people can latch onto after the drama subsides. Miles Bonsignore recently left his position at the Try Guys where he managed the tripod. And he was decently well known in this position. He had a lot of followers. But since then he struck out with his own YouTube channel and podcast, both of which are pretty successful. <laughs> And in one of his first videos, he framed the thumbnail and title around drama. This is that thumbnail. The title, of course, claims that there may have been friction between Miles and Try Guys founder, Ned Fulmer. I mean, around a year ago, I almost quit my job. I was having a lot of difficulty with a certain member of the staff who was in charge of a lot of the business decisions of the company. And, you know, to avoid a defamation suit, I'll just say that I found this particular individual quite yucky. 
who, if you don't go on Twitter, uh, is surrounded by drama, period. Yeah. However, by the end of the video, Miles also makes it clear that while he used drama to bring people in, that's not who he is or what he's about. It's not a great way to foster a community and build a following. Because once the drama dries up, that following goes away. And so of course you could build a following by always starting new drama, but how much does that weigh you down with negative feelings all the time? Eventually your lively revolves around you fighting with people and starting beefs. And that's taxing. It's a great traffic initiating tool. But since then, Miles also posts a ton of great and unique content that has nothing to do with drama from the Try Guys or frankly, anybody. And so after you find him from that initial video, you have something with legitimate artistic value to latch onto on his channel that actually fulfills you in a positive way as a viewer. Meanwhile, on a completely unrelated note, have you guys seen my TikTok about Zach Braff? Zach Braff definitely just stole my movie. Here I am at 14 making my feature film, Not About Train, about a police homicide detective who was secretly a humanoid duck. He was trying to solve a murder. The eyewitness for the murder was blind. Blind eyewitness is obsessed with model trains. And at one point in the movie, he tells the detective, you know, my trains are my distraction from reality. And actually reality is just that time period between when I sleep and when I get to play with my trains. One thing my friends and I would do after making the movie is we would hit up celebrities doing AMAs on Reddit and ask them for feedback on the movie. And one of those people was Zach Braff. Almost a decade later, I just got back from seeing a good person. It starts out with Morgan Freeman being an old man talking about how his model trains are his distraction from reality. I'm like 85% joking, but that is a weird coincidence. In high school, I made a silly little little low budget movie and by low budget I mean like $20 on a rubber duck mask and it was a big part of my life because even though the product wasn't that great I learned a lot about filmmaking and being an artist and I also forged really great friendships with a lot of people who I still talk to all the time and one thing we would do after we made this movie is we would send it to celebrities when they did AMAs ask me anythings on reddit one of the few celebrities who ever wrote us back was Zach Braff he's in the company of others like a Elijah Wood, who said, what is this? And Ricky Gervais, who said, I hate you and your work. But Zach Braff sent us specific plot notes. And here's the bummer of the season. Hi everybody, uh, Oliver the Ricketts here. Towards the end of the edit, and sometimes you just finish that long video and you find out that something in the recording is not right. <laughs> but nothing tickles me more than the comments on my TikTok about it saying, when do we ride? When are we going to drag Zach Braff into the town square and demand he pay for his sins? <laughs> the gist of what we're saying about Zach Braff is, uh, do I actually believe that he stole my movie when I was 14? Absolutely not. It's like Ryan Stringfellow and the Miami Joker guy. It's, I did the same thing. So maybe it's a little bit hypocritical, but at least we can point it out and make fun of my own past efforts. That, that was the... I guess the point of this video. Also, it's a good side note that it was absolutely wonderful of Zach Braff to respond to us at all and it made my whole 14 year old world. And A Good Person is a wonderful but very sad movie. I highly recommend. You know, hopefully Zach Braff has a, a sense of humor about it. Not that he'd ever see it. I like to think that people like drama. But maybe when they click on my drama stoking video, they see that I make a lot of other videos that have nothing to do with drama, but are just labors of love, artistic endeavors that I pour myself into at all times. And if just one person sticks around and watches even one of those, and I get to touch their day and their life with something that I made, it's maybe worth starting a little something with Zach Braff that he'll never reply to. And folks, if you agree with any of my thoughts on this situation, or you think it was worth it to poke Zach Braff, please subscribe to this channel, give this video a like so that more of my stuff gets recommended to you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. I'm Oliver the Ricketts, and I'm not famous.
the city is going to the dog smithy. I remember when people in this town used to believe in things. 